so continuing my current complete quack fest, I've got another of these little energy saver units. These are the miracle devices that you just plug into a socket in your house and it somehow saves power and cuts your electricity bill. And this one's a bit odd in the sense that the it cut, this is the UK version which has a square pin plug in it and all the writing and all the you know stuff on the side is, is in Spanish. It's not got English anywhere in this. And it says... A horador de energia inteligent. My apologies to the Spanish for absolutely murdering their language there. But it translates to intelligent power saver. And on one hand, I was thinking, well, A, it's really not going to be intelligent. And probably the people that buy it aren't going to be intelligent either. But that's not fair. Because people could genuinely buy this thinking it was going to save them power. So let's uh, pop it open. And I have to say... Uh, it's very nice. It's very neat. Oh, it does say it does have English. And, uh, it does have the intelligent energy saver. The result is the best electricity saving box. That's handy. Oh, and it's uh, this is the thirty kilowatt version. Handy, and operates from ninety volts to two hundred and fifty volts. So they're covering every. Uh, oh, I like that bit there. Electricity saving spikes buster. Spike spelt with an X. That's nice. Oh, and it's passed its quality. Quality assurance test. Um, made in Republic of China, and all the instructions are in Spanish again. Lovely. Right, so let's uh, do what we've done before and plug it into the power meter. The power meter, the green LED is lit, the power meter is not registering anything. Current voltage is 247 volts. Current, current, is 254 milliamps. Okay. Let's get the notepad out and do the maths, shall we? I could just stick a meter across it, but it's kind of fun to do the maths and see if we come anywhere near close. So um, that was 247 volts, um, which is supposed to be 230 volts under the European harmonization of voltage, but um, there's a huge tolerance that they just said, we'll make everybody's voltage standard 220, 240, we'll make it standard 230, and they just put a huge tolerance on it. So our voltages are the same, but they fit into their new standard. Uh, so this is a 254 milliamps, 0 0.254 amps. And that is, because it was displaying no watts, that is purely going to be reactive current, it's capacitive current, it's completely out of phase with the uh, voltage and that's why it doesn't register as power. Someone mentioned that, you know, these probably have some effect in suppressing spikes and transients in the mains. And they probably do. I'm not sure how good they'd be for that. Anyway, doing the maths, Xc equals 1 over 2 pi Fc. Those of you who watch this channel a lot will have seen this formula a lot because, um, of course, we use it for things like capacitive droppers. And this is one of these formulas that if they teach you it at school, it just won't go into your head because it's boring as sin. It's just, unless there's an actual application, that's just absolute gibberish. But in this case, we do have uh, something we can compute with. So XC, capacitive reactance, is the equivalent resistance that the capacitance is posing to get that current. So that means, where's the calculator? that uh, 247 volts divided by the current of 0.254 equals 972, so 972 ohms. And that's the capacitive reactance, that's the equivalent value uh, that the capacitance is posing as if you'd used a resistor, but uh, of course it's a capacitor, which is completely different. Now we can then work out, out that out by going the 2 pi Fc, uh, 2 times pi times f, the frequency here is 50 hertz, c is the unknown variable. So if we stick that uh, into the usual, what's the, this is where I screw this up, I'm, I'm bound to screw it up at some point because I'm rubbish, uh, rubbish at doing maths when there's a gun like a camera pointed at my head here. So um, 1 divided by, 1 divided by 972 ohms equals, and uh, so that's a, now we've got the situation we've got, that this figure here is a 2 pi f times c. 2 pi f is 314 in this case. So this divided by 314 equals, 
OK, so the capacitor is theoretically um, 3.2 microfarads. Let's uh, put that to the test. Let's make sure I discharge this because that's still quite a beefy capacitor. Let's uh, discharge this and get a capacitance meter. A dedicated capacitance meter, they're the best type to use for this. Stick my fingers over there just to make sure it is discharged. That's, that's the technical way to do it. What's it going to be? What's it going to be? Oh, look at that! That's good. That's very good. I like it when the sums work out. So there's a typically about a 3.2 microfarad capacitor in here. I'm guessing that's just going to be a 3 microfarad capacitor with a little bit of tolerance. Excellent. So let's uh, take it there's a screw under there. Get the quality control pass off. Need a thinner screwdriver for that one. Oh, that's not going to work. That's going to work. Okay. Right. So there's a big fat capacitor, which is so common to these things. There's the circuitry, there's a fuse, which is good. It looks like this capacitive dropper for the LED, but I don't think it's going to be drawing much current because it didn't really seem to, it didn't register as power. And normally something like that would register, but it, uh, it's really, it's going to be minute. It's going to be, that looked like a gallium arsenide or gallium phosphide LED. So two volts, you know, even at 10 milliamps, it's going to be just 20 milliwatts. It's not even going to show. So yeah, we've got thin flimsy wires coming onto the circuit board. What looks like a standard capacitive drop with a f discrete uh, diode rectifier. Right. What's it say in the capacitor? It doesn't say anything in the capacitor. Have they shaved the edges off the capacitor? Have they actually chaffed that off to make it fit into the case? How does this fit into the case? Yeah, they've actually, because the case slopes, They've actually chaffed off the edge to make capacitor fit in. That's a bit dodgy. Okay, right, I'm just going to pause momentarily and I'm going to just reverse engineer this uh, PCB and then I'll we'll take a look at it. And no great surprises. Um, so the mains comes in, goes through the fuse. That's a good thing. Goes to the capacitor. There's a discharge resistor of 270K across it. Um, there's a 100 nanofarad drop capacitor. And because there's a resistor across here, they don't bother with the resistor to discharge that one that's normally used to give, stop you getting tingles off pins. Uh, it's a 270k resistor, which, uh, you know, that's not bad. It's going to discharge that quite quickly when it's unplugged. Then there's a discrete bridge rectifier and a 5.1k resistor across that. Not quite sure why, but that's okay. Uh, and then a 100 ohm uh, resistor in series of the LED. And as with so many of these things, and I've looked up some of my previous videos in these just to t compare, they've got positions for three LEDs. Sometimes they've just one, sometimes they've two, sometimes in the super luxury models they may even have the three. But they've got them all wired in parallel. And when you're using capacitive dropper, you've got shitloads of voltage here, you might as well put them all in series and they'll all be running at the full brightness that's available through this 100 nanofarad capacitor. But by putting them in parallel, it ends up reducing the intensity. They've also uh, got a facility for a <clears throat> um, capacitor on here for smoothing it, but they've not actually used that. Oh, I also see YUR. What's that? Oh, right, okay. I'm guessing that they also had the facility for a voltage-dependent resistor across here just as a sort of extra spike transient. You know, these things, they claim they're for saving power and they're going to reduce your bill. They're almost a glorified transient suppressor filter type thing, but kind of 
I don't know. It's, it's really odd. It's such a huge value of capacitor they have in them. They won't save you power in your electricity bill. Um, but, um, well, they won't do a lot, actually. I suppose they will filter transients, but uh, other than that, they're, the most important thing in this one is the LED for show to make it look like it's active. Um, I do like this case. The wires are just soldered onto the screws that hold the pins in. The pins are slightly shorter than typical British uh, plug pins should be, but it's just a few millimetres. Um, but that's still, uh, you know, an issue. You can look at it and instantly see that it's, they're not the right length, it's just that wee bit shorter. Other than that, I do quite like it just as the case. It's quite a smart case. It'd be quite a handy project case for plugging into UK mains, given, even despite that slight uh, issue with the pin length. These are unlikely to be um, brass. Hmm... They're not magnetic. I wonder if they're sort of plated aluminium, although you never know, they might be brass, but I very much doubt it. There's one way to find out, and that's to take a wee look inside, unless the the plating has extended right into the thread. Oh, is that going to come out? Yes, it is. Uh, it looks brassy coloured all the way in. Yeah, not sure. If it's just an alloy that's sort of brassy coloured or if it is actually brass. But yeah, it's what we'd expect, you know, it is one of these bogus energy savers. Um, it won't save energy, but uh, it might have some element of a filtering effect. But uh, yeah, interesting enough anyway, and quite a smart little unit. So I was putting this back together and I thought, how on earth did that come to bits? Because uh, I couldn't see the way to mount the circuit board in. It's got a couple of pillars down there, but the wires were definitely underneath them. Really sure they were underneath. I could look at the video, you know, but uh, the, uh, as far as I can see, they were underneath and this sits into, the capacitor sits into a sort of mount and certainly the capacitor will be held in quite tightly. Well, we know that because they had to shave the corners off to actually make it fit in. But as far as I can see, the only way the LED is going to protrude enough to actually go through the hole in the front is if you actually just stuff it through the hole and sit the circuit board on those wires in there so that when it goes together, the only thing that's actually holding the LED in place, you can press the LED down, uh, is the wires just bunched up behind the circuit board, shoving the LED through the hole. That actually seems to be how it's made. Um, so quite amusing, actually, the way they've done that. I should mention that this was not an expensive unit. It was £2.73, and to be honest, if I tried buying a 3 microfarad capacitor, I wouldn't get it for that price. Um, and the case itself, I kind of like the case. Uh, it's it's just begging for another sort of mains powered project. So, yeah, all very odd, but uh, I still like it. Cause, mainly because it is a quack device. It's just kind of silly and it's quite nice.